The Colburn Bible, Chapter 16, Choosing a Wife It is the nature of things that man should take unto himself a wife, and the law decrees the need of man for woman. But not every kind of wood is fit to make an arrow, and not every woman makes a suitable wife. Examine carefully the women of your acquaintance. Choose not hastily, nor fix your mind suddenly. For upon a proper choice depends your fortune, your future contentment, and, and joy, and the welfare of your children. Choose not according to face and form alone, for these will pass, though fairness of face and proportion of figure are not to be disregarded. Observe your chosen one and consider her in your solitude. If her mind is overoccupied with dress and adornment, if she laughs too much and talks too loud, if she has a roving foot for pleasure and a bold eye for men, if her manner is crude and her tongue inclined toward lewdness, then though her beauty were as that of the sun disk itself and her form shaped to perfection, turn from her path and set your heart against her charms. Dismiss your mind from the alluring phantoms of the imagination. Your body may incline towards her, but it drags you towards sorrow. If her body calls and your heart says nay, then flee from her presence and see her no more. The heart of a wise man chooses his wife but the wife of a weakling and fool is chosen by his body. When you find a maiden who can be your reasonable companion, who possesses a loyal and steadfast heart, sensitivity of spirit, pity and gentleness, delicacy of mind, softness of manner, who is intelligent and joyous, with all this has a lively spirit, Gather her to your arms, for she is a worthy, she is worthy indeed to be your wife. She will be prudent and temperate and a fitting mother for your children, and above all, you will have a treasure beyond price. He who chooses a good mother for his children will find contentment and joy with his wife. Judge not your chosen by your own opinions alone, for your eyes are clouded and your judgment confused. Judge her by the opinions of other men. Is she sought by them as a wife, or is she one whom men follow for their pleasure? The greatest gift that life can bestow upon a man is a good wife. Therefore be diligent and prudent in your search. For a good wife is not gathered by the wayside. In your search for a fitting wife, you will, will have many competitors. For though the divisions of men and women are nearly equal, many are the women who are unsuitable. Be diligent, lest to your sorrow you find none left to choose from but those whom other men have passed over. None but the fool takes to wife the common woman, for she has her price and is available to all. Nor the weak woman, for she can be taken by any man. Yet these two, as their attractions wane, will seek a husband for their old age, and lacking the attractiveness of virtue, will set their trap for the unwary. They will find their prey among weaklings who care not about their, wife, their wife's virtue, for they take secret pleasure in their own humiliation and debasement. No man is more generous than he who marries a common woman, for he shares her with the multitude. When you find a good woman, cherish her as your greatest treasure. Let your kindness and consideration take possession of her heart. She is the mistress in your home, so treat her with respect, 
that the servants shall obey her, and the stranger treat her with diffidence. If a man treats not his wife with respect, can he take offense when other men, observing this, treat her likewise? As she is the partner of your cares and the helpmate with your burdens, deny her not your companionship in pleasure. Be faithful and constant to her, for she is the mother of your children. He who drinks water from his own fountain knows it to be clean. He who draws water from his own well knows it to be pure. In times of affliction and pain, when your wife suffers in sickness or travail, soothe her with tender words and gentle countenance. A look of sympathy and a gesture of understanding from you will mitigate her trouble and be of more avail than the attention of many physicians. Consider the delicacy of her womanhood and the frailty of her body. Comfort her in grief and bear with her weakness. Bring wisdom and understanding to your aid, for if in marriage one is wise, two are happy. Do not marry while too young, for you have not experience enough to train your son, nor, nor be too old that you have not the patience. There is a mean in marriage as in all things. He who chooses his wife rashly or in haste spends slow years in regret and repentance. The counsel of a wife is wise and bent to your own benefit, but the counsel of an outside woman serves her own ends. Love your wife wholly, according to the dictates of your own heart, and rightly according to the statutes of men. Fill her stomach and clothe her back. Provide her with oil for anointing and hair for her, adorn for her adornment. Keep her contented and give her no cause for alarm or unrest. Be gentle with her, for she is a profitable field for your efforts. Enter not into dispute with her, for women are gentle, and withdraw their hearts before force. If you are harsh, she will return into herself. Make her home a joyful place. An industrious wife is of more value than treasure. She endows her husband with peace and gladness, but a slovenly wife brings discontent into the dwelling place. The husband of an unchaste woman lives in a den of suspicion. There is no greater restlessness than that of a husband apart from an untrustworthy wife. A man loves his mother and his father, his sisters and his brothers all his life, yet they are not of his choosing. How much more likely should it be that he would love his wife? whom he himself chooses? Or is man's judgment less wise than that of fate? Nothing will ever bring you greater pleasure and joy than a good wife, or more sorrow than a bad one. Yet of all things he does, bearing on his life and future, a man generally uses the least wisdom when choosing a wife. Be considerate, for the husband without consideration prepares his own betrayal. There are two types of women, true women and common women. The common woman is a fitting mate for the weakling, and the true woman a, feeding, a fitting mate for the real man. But the dispensations of life are such that common woman will desire real men for husbands, and weaklings will deceive true women. Therefore, the real man must be wise enough to know the difference between a common woman and a true woman, and a true woman 
must know the difference between a real man and a weakling. To know and recognize the divisions of men and women is not only the first step to contentment, but it is the duty of a people, if it would remain wholesome. When the dividing line becomes blurred, nations decline. It is easy enough to get a wife, but difficult to get a good one. Marriage is like the fisherman's net, easy to get into, but hard to escape from. No man is the same after marriage. Either his joys are doubled and his sorrows halved, or his joys are halved and his sorrows doubled. Thank you.